Devin Booker has been playing lights out for the Phoenix Suns through the 23 to 24 NBA season. Shooting 50% from the field while averaging over 28 points per game, I decided to create a Photoshop manipulation of his dominance on the court. He gives a spark to the Phoenix Suns day in and day out. And this Photoshop artwork is a reflection of that. Let's get right to it. Started off with the player retouching on Devin Booker. Wanted to make sure he was all set and ready to go. Looking clean, looking sharp before I got to the manipulation. This canyon that you're seeing, that ground texture is going to be in an upcoming pack. We're going to do a grounds pack on shopscope.com. So make sure you guys tap in to my digital store, Shopscope. Put the link in the description of this video to just help you as a designer. LUT pack, fire pack, cloud pack, hard mock-up trading pack. A lot of packs on there and we only add into it. Was utilizing in bottle elements to look up a lot of stock photos. And curves is always helping me out. See that balance of curves and levels that I use in order to blend subjects into a scene. And they're just very powerful tools that I'm always using curves, levels, and then hue and saturation tab. I would say those are my go-to. You can add color balance in there as well. When you're designing, you're really gonna find your three key tools that are go-to for you. And you always come back to them, be able to rely on them. See my selective colors too. Just to balance everything out, make it little clean. Selective colors really great for tinting the skin a bit. If you're on the reds or if you're on yellows, touch of selective color is going to go a long way. That path blur right there to take away a lot of the canyon that's in focus because I want to create a scene that looks like it's coming out of the camera. That's what I try to go for when I'm making anything. I want it to look like you just took a photo of a player in action or in an environment. And I want to, I want you to have that feel like you are the photographer taking that photo. If you're looking at the canvas, looking at the artwork, that's the fun of manipulations is really putting you in a scene, putting you there with a player right in front of the action. This Phoenix that's in the sky, found this on Adobe stock. This was a actual AI generated image. So it just fit the scene so perfectly. I said, why not? Let's go try it out. Was able to put it in the background right there with some atmospheric brushes to really give it that feel that the bird is far away and in a distant place compared to our subject. However, you can still see it clearly and it adds so much to this scene, I think. Human saturation is my go-to when I'm gonna be lighting objects, like you see how I'm lighting that ground, touching it up, adding the shadows. Human saturation is great, even on the body right here. Is once you find the right tone that you wanna use, just Make sure you duplicate that and then use it on anything. Adjust it a little bit as you need. However, the color is going to be the same if you're from the same light source like that fire right there. It's just going to be at different light values. So make sure you utilize copying and pasting your adjustments, not doing it over and over again. I 
having death within my scenes is very important to me because it makes it feel more immersive and realistic. You get more of a sense of death. See that path blur right there? That trail, it's just leading down and I can choose my own motion blur, which is really good. That's why I like path blur a lot. I was really proud of those feathers on the ground. There's always very subtle things that you gloss over or forget about. That's one thing that I'll always look back on this piece and say, I don't even know if they would know if those feathers on the ground were not part of the scene if I didn't, didn't do a speed art video like this. This fire, I was able to mask it out, put it on screen and blur it in the background to start getting that brightness to the overall environment and for a second I was a little bit stuck on where the brightest lights were going to come from was it going to be the fireball was it going to be maybe the bird in the back and I took a moment and then realized I didn't have much fire on the environment so that's where I really started to go in and start adding some more light and explosion of color and everything that brings a piece together that's what art is about. It's just finding that right point where you say, okay, now I got it. Once I get that to that point where I say, now I got it, that's when everything starts to come into its own. And you know, you start locking in on your light values, your colors. It's almost like you can get taken away to another place, another, another dimension. Honestly, when I, when I, at least when I make art, I really feel so connected to my pieces. It's a great feeling uh, once you really get in that flow state. Then finding assets that are going to aid to the piece, the streaks, and was just playing around with the composition of where I really wanted them to be and how to blend them in seamlessly. You're going to see the color balance very quickly. However, the color balance that I used on these light streaks did give them a lot because once I pasted them in and just put them on screen, I was like, well, these will be fine as they are until I really adjusted the color of them and see right there. Yep. They got a little bit more yellow, a little bit more of that orange glow. However, they're fitting the scene a little bit more now. So those small, subtle adjustments are going to go a long way. And then I decided against using the custom fire that I had made and put in another asset from shopscope.com, which is the fireball pack or just the fire pack in general. And that fire fit the basketball. I only had to warp it a little bit, but look how well it just wraps around the geometry of that spear. path blur motion blur that is controlled by the user that's the greatest thing about path blur is the blur is controlled by the user so however you want your motion blur to go in the direction you can really control it to a t there's always some things i don't end up using just like that explosion and you know at, through a piece you're gonna find things that you really like or don't like that's why i like to usually when i'm making a piece i try to include all of my tries and tribulations that went through the speed art and not just cut them out for the sake of oh i want to make it look like i'm perfect art is not a perfect craft and 
maybe at the end it looks very perfect and seamless however we know that it has its ups and downs throughout the process it's that haze that i added in oh that orange haze really gave it that push and made me think okay this is going to be a great piece this might be one of my better pieces that i've made once i really start adding in that orange haze and you see the lights coming in now the fire and everything starting to look so much more pushed and dramatic and realistic in a sense checking and balances checks and balances as you hear in school it's all the color balances that i need to make sure of it's all of the mask adjustments that i need to make sure i didn't do too much on adding support light from the elements such as the rocks or the sky and just a lot of checks man So the final thing I do is go in camera raw to wrap it up, check out my sharpening, check out my balances, making sure everything's clocking in the right way that I want to have my art looking for the final piece. So here's the final result hope you guys really enjoyed this video if you did make sure to smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and turn that bell on so that you guys know whenever i upload i'll be back on another video next week so stay tuned it's been calso scoped the artist of athletes peace